Hi, thank you for holding this, is Catherine. May I get your name? And what are your current concerns about the children being in her care? CPS's job is to, of course, care for children who are abused and neglected. Texas literally looks at tens of thousands of cases every year. CPS has effectively an impossible job. Parents have the right to be parents, and so you violate their rights if you take kids away too quickly. If you take them away too slowly, the results can be catastrophic. So we wanted to talk a little bit, um, just, you know what we've done, just go through all of sure. these reports. I have found dozens of CPS employees that have been caught lying to prosecutors. False there was this law in 2009 right. passed by Senator Uresti that made the state produce these reports, details about the child, where they came from, cause of death, and also any details as to CPS's previous involvement with the child. So all of these reports had been filed and nobody was looking at them. Over the course of our investigation, we looked at 800 cases where the agency had identified that a child had died as a result of abuse or neglect. Once we saw what was in them, we quickly realized we needed to put this into a database. Some of the things that we found, we noticed a large group of children being harmed by a parent's boyfriend or girlfriend who had come into the home. Uh, and these boyfriends or girlfriends apparently, some of them had a past of abusing other children. Missed opportunities to help these kids. They've been there numerous times and things that seemed obvious to us on paper didn't appear to be obvious to them. We found quite a few families that had been on CPS's radar and they were working with them and then they completely just dropped off the face of the earth. Um, CPS couldn't find them and the next time they saw them, the kids died. By identifying some risk factors, the child's age, whether the child himself had been previously removed, whether there was a history of sexual abuse in the family, we were able to say, well, here's the actual numerical risk that a child faces of being abused or neglected based on what we've seen in the past. The information might be available in individual instances, but taken together can paint a more complete picture that allows caseworkers to act very kind of quickly and decisively. Obviously, we all want the agency that we, um, that we charge with protecting kids to act as best they can, right? We want them to, be, to do their job more efficiently. We want them to do it better. We don't want any child to die. So the more that they can use this information to better prevent childhood abuse and neglect deaths, the better off that everyone will be. I hope people read it. I really think that they'll find it interesting. I hope that they really understand how bad it is you know, we see these isolated cases, and it's just pervasive. These are just the kids who died. I can't even imagine how many others are living and being abused. When you deal with data and big numbers, they tend to all kind of swim together and be kind of abstract, and you forget that you become kind of numb, and you forget that you're dealing with real people, and you're dealing with real people who have lived through an unimaginably horrible tragedy. What's worse than having a child die? You want to cry for these people, but there's this sense in them of they're resilient. You know, um, they want justice and they will fight for it.